So if you have really bad anxiety, I'm sure at some point you have thought that you were dying of a heart attack or a stroke or an embolism, an aneurysm, something that made you feel like you were about to die right now, even if you didn't know what it was. A huge part of my anxiety and panic disorder whenever I was having panic attacks, I felt like I was about to die very quickly. I thought it was gonna be a medical emergency or something that was gonna happen within a few seconds. So this is something that helped me tremendously to get past that phase of my anxiety. And trust me, when you get past the phase of worrying about sudden death or thinking that you're dying right now when you feel anxious or you're having an anxiety attack or panic attack, it gets a lot easier. So guys, I want you to think about the worst pains you've ever been through in your entire life. I have a bunch of them. Most of you have a bunch of them. Intense pains. I'm talking about, in my situation, abscess tooth. I've had an abscessed tooth where my whole left side of my face swelled up so bad it looked like the hunchback from Notre Dame. <laughs> I looked like Quasimodo, all right? I looked like the guy from the Goonies and I was just laying on my bed day three in before I had to go to an emergency dentist so they could pull it. It was this close to sepsis. I had my arm, my right arm snapped in half. Very intense, very intense. I've had this eyebrow right here cut open where I had to have 12 stitches blood everywhere you could actually see my skull from it getting cut open i've had chronic ear infections since i was a child luckily the past three years have been really really good knock on wood that's not even around i've had gout in my right foot which is basically glass in your joints and that crap hurt for two weeks where i couldn't even walk it felt like i broke my right ankle think of some of your worst pains i know you got a bunch of them what are the worst pains you've been through comment right now in the comment section your worst pains that you've ever experienced. Some of you are gonna talk about gallstones, pancreatitis, appendicitis, migraines, you name it. Some of the ones that I mentioned. So how does this help us with anxiety about sudden death, right? Or medical emergencies. So whenever I would have panic attacks, anxiety attacks, or just really bad anxiety, I would really quickly go to heart attack or stroke, aneurysm, embolism. Um, something that was gonna take me out very quickly because I was getting flooded with adrenaline, I was getting short of breath, chest tightness, headaches, dizziness, lightheadedness, which would freak me out. So immediately I'm going to those things and you have to realize guys, in those moments, you are not meant to be rational. You're not meant to actually sit there and be like, well, you know, I've been checked out a few times. I've, I've gotten all the testing done. Um, you know, I've been through this and been through that, or this just happened two hours ago and I didn't die. We're not meant to do that. Your body and mind is trying to save you. It's trying to get you out of a dangerous situation. The problem is there's not a tiger in front of you. There's not, there's not a tiger. There's not an enemy. Nothing dangerous is happening, right? So what do we do? We quickly go to, there's gotta be something wrong with my body. Oh my God, I feel like I'm about to die. I feel like I can't breathe, right? That fear component is what magnifies everything. So a foot in the door to try to be rational very quickly to help de-escalate the situation and get us out of these panic attacks. There's, there's not a lot of stuff that works, guys, but this helped me tremendously, aside from exercise, cold water, and some grounding techniques. But guys, I would quickly go to this situation where I was in the worst pain ever, right? Go back to my abscess tooth over here where I, my face swelled up. Oh my God, I, I was in agonizing pain. But you know what? Technically, what I'm dealing with right now, if I really stop, and even though I have this adrenaline, I'm having these symptoms, these symptoms right now technically don't feel more painful than this abscess. Would I trade these actual physical symptoms for that abscess? No. What's, what's the extra component that I just mentioned? Fear, right? Whenever I snap my arm in half, whenever I snapped it in half, did that feel worse? There's some chest tightness and some shortness of breath. You better believe it did. But I didn't think I was about to die, right? That unknown factor, that fear factor wasn't there because anxiety wasn't causing that situation. You see what I mean? I knew I was going to go in, get my arm fixed. Did it hurt like hell? Yeah. You know, I was in eighth grade. Didn't even cry over it, but it hurt like hell. Whenever I had my bad gout attack in my right ankle, I could not walk. I could not walk. I had to hop around to get around because I didn't have crutches. Because I couldn't put any weight on that foot. Excruciating pain, some of the worst pain I've ever been through in my life. But guess what, if I'm having a panic attack and the fear component's there and I feel some weakness in my legs but yet I can still walk around like this, I still feel like I'm about to die. Here we go. What's the common denominator? Fear, shortness of breath. This is another big one. I know a lot of you guys, what if you feel like you can't breathe? 
What if you feel like you can't breathe? Guys, I was a correctional officer whenever I was actually going through my anxiety, and this was actually a breakthrough for me. We had to actually get gassed. Guys, whenever that gas, we had to stand there, link arms, and sit there and take that gas right there, right in our freaking faces, right in our nostrils, right up the pipe, right? And we had to deal with that crap for 30 seconds before they let us walk. Guys, I have never felt more shortness of breath feeling like I was going to die than that moment right there, right there. It compared and nothing, right? It compared nothing to having an anxiety attack and feeling a little tightness, some shortness of breath and hyperventilation, just general hyperventilation, right? But in that moment, guess, guess what guys? There was fear, fear. That component right there changes the game and it magnifies any of these symptoms that we're having. And when you have really bad anxiety, guys, and you have panic attacks and anxiety attacks, you have to find something, guys. That's why I'm sharing this video. Something to help you be rational within a few seconds so it doesn't escalate into the six-hour-long panic attack. I would have panic attacks that would last hours, ruin my whole freaking day thinking about these symptoms. You need to get your foot in the door within a few seconds. So I'm sharing this with you guys. Hopefully that can help. Think back to your worst pains and think, am I technically feeling the worst pains that I've ever felt in my life, okay? And in that moment, you have to realize what's, what's driving this. It's fear, it's fear. And if that can help you believe in that moment that you're not gonna die, guess what? The fear component goes down. The panic goes down, the anxiety goes down. And guess what? With that, confidence builds. And guess what? The symptoms start to dissipate a lot more quickly than they would have before. And trust me, I'm not trying to discredit any of your anxiety symptoms. I went through this for five years and I know how bad it can freaking be. I know how bad it can be. I think the time of which we suffer and the fear component, it, it makes it a living hell. It is a living hell. But the main reason it's a living hell is because of the fear. Because of the fear. A lot more help on my page, guys. Um, I love you all and hope some of you could get value out of this.